All right, well, hello everyone and uh, welcome to Crossfire and hope everyone's doing well today. So I want to welcome uh, Theo. Hey Theo, how you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, hi, I'm Theo. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah, Theo, welcome to Crossfire. And um, do you want to just give us a 30 second introduction? Just kind of tell us briefly about yourself. Yeah, so I'm from, I live in Vancouver, I'm from Canada. Uh, I'm from Montreal originally. Um, I'm interested in integral for like 15 years almost now, wow. well, maybe a bit less. Um, I, uh, I love integral life. I spend a lot of time there learning and uh, it's kind of my study right now. And what else? I have a background in management, sustainable development and uh, post-production for film, um, televisions series and, and shows. Uh, I, I work freelance, but I also uh, had all kinds of different uh, work experience. I try to practice every day. And uh, now my goal is to practice more my, um, my English uh, writing. So I write more and I, I, I use the, uh, you've seen me on the, on the board um, community. Yeah. So that's, that's what it is. Great. Well, well, um, great to have you here, and I look, I look forward to getting to know you more and hearing more about your background. It sounds very interesting. And welcome, Charles. Morning, Charles. And oh, here we have uh, Jeremy here too. There you go. Good morning, Ryan. Hey. So, um, so I thought I'd just briefly talk about what the topic is uh, for today, and um, kind of what will come in, in future Crossfire sessions. So today the topic is going to be what is our biggest disagreement or beef with integral theory, Ken Wilber, or the integral movement in general. And we'll see what kind of um, solutions or amendments we can come to together to, to work out some of these kinks that we see in the theory or in the movement. And we may have disagreements with each other's disagreements, so I think that will be fun to explore. Um, several housekeeping things. So I thought since there's a lot of us here, let's try to keep our shares kind of crisp to about two minutes and 30 seconds seem to be a good time. So I will keep track with my stopwatch and remind people of where they're uh, going over the time. And of course, if people are curious in what you're saying, just ask follow up questions and you can talk more kind of an indication that people are people want to hear more from you. Uh, just because we have a lot of people today thought I'd mention that. Um, and I thought we'd begin by describing or begin by opening, giving like a one minute opening about just a check in how you're doing today. And also, if you want to just mention um, what your biggest issue with integral theory is. And after everyone gives a check in, then we'll go more deeply, see where the conversation takes us and explore the topic. And as I said in the last meeting, I'll just say it again, since more people are here. These, I, I have decided that these crossfire sessions, they do have a goal in all of our minor disagreements that may come up with each other or, or points of debate during the conversation. The background goal is to move towards some kind of an integrated perspective and solution by the end of the hour and a half. And so even if we don't get there, I just think it's helpful to have a goal. So it gives us some direction and helps to focus our conversation and our thinking about the topic. And so even though we may have a lot of divergent perspectives, we'll see if we can come, we'll, we'll try to exercise our integral capacity and, and arrive at an integrated conclusion which, in which the valid points and, and values of our perspectives can all be integrated and, and we can arrive at a more holistic uh, view of the situation. So uh, I'll just begin quickly with my um, kind of 30 second intro, kind of my biggest disagreement or, or little flies in integral theory. And this is something that I've, I've talked to um, Paul about a lot. And it's, it's an issue with the concept of the shadow, I think needs some clarification. And I think the term has been misused or overused. And so um, I, I, maybe today or some other time, I'd like to have a, a deeper discussion about how that concept should be limited and focused and um, how it could be misapplied. So that's me and anyone, please jump in. Okay, Ryan, Charles here. Hi, everybody. Good to be with you. Uh, my biggest beef with uh, Integral is that I can't keep up with it. Ken Wilbur is always leaping ahead. He's three jumps ahead of everybody. He says he's got three or four books 
in the pipeline right now. And um, his associates are busy spreading the gospel all over the globe too. And they're doing their own projects. And if I tried to keep up with it all, I'd, uh, I'd have to fill all the closets in my house with new books and my car as well. Uh, I'm only kidding, of course. Um, but it's great to see the movement growing and, and uh, uh, so many offshoots uh, uh, resulting in uh, creative advance, creative advance into novelty. So um, there's been a discussion going on this week uh, arising out of a meeting that I hold on, on Mondays, Ryan attends, and uh, Karen has been keeping in touch. We hope she'll attend one of these days. Hi, Karen. Uh, it's about um, it's about the three bodies doctrine. Got a difficulty with that in the claim that uh, we find Ken Wilber making in his book Integral Spirituality and in uh, another document, Introduction to Integral Theory, that we're studying. That uh, we have actually three bodies. Uh, the first is the physical that uh, we're all manifesting right now, which uh, serves as the platform or, or the support or the correlate to our three most familiar states of consciousness, waking, dreaming, and deep sleep. So that's all pretty easy to understand. Um, the perplexity enters in when Wilbur says we have subtle body, we have a subtle body and a causal body as well. So we have a physical body, a subtle body, which is, uh, which we associate with dreams and, and, and visions um, and uh, perhaps other states of consciousness that are not so closely associated with the, with the physical body. And finally, we have a causal body which is the energetic feeling that supports the individual when we enter into the causal state. Now, the causal state is, is the witness. So it's a distinct state of consciousness, distinct that is from ordinary waking, uh, dreaming, and deep sleep. So uh, what bothers me about this is that uh, we, we know there are physical correlates to waking and dreaming. We can measure those with electroencephalograph uh, machines. Um, so Charles, maybe if you, just, if you just summarize yeah. it in one, one sentence, what is your disagreement? One sentence. Uh, I don't see the need for the two extra bodies, the subtle and the causal, because I'm betting that uh, there are correlates in the physical body and the physical nervous system uh, that, that if not now, one day can be measured uh, that correspond to the subtle and the causal. Not the non-dual, of course, because it's formless. Great, thanks, okay, Charles. So I, yeah. Well, I will jump in here. Charles, I would love to chew into this with you, maybe on a one, one X1 session of crossfire someday because i have a lot a lot to say on this subject as you already heard on email um, i'm karen Voorhees. i live in berkeley california ground center for the mean green meme and what i'd like to throw into the pot today is uh, and this gets back to what ryan said about the shadow my i would i would make two additions to ken wilbur's meta theory and i would make two tweaks but i have one big issue and that is what i personally see as the shadow side currently of of integral which is the arrogance and specifically in a passage in ken wilbur's the religion of tomorrow um, our collective maybe not conscious arrogance toward other structure levels and how that affects how we interact with them and i am passionately concerned about this because I see a practical problem in the world looming ahead as we come out of our current political situation into a progressive era. The people, the core Trump voters are going to be, I, there's a real chance for them to become kind of impacted into our own homegrown ISIS unless we are very skillful in listening to them and talking with them. And certain things I see in integral 
give us uh, maybe some at times unconscious arrogance that means we're just going to piss them off further and drive them further into their own worse natures. And I'm very concerned. So that's what I throw in the pot now. I think that's a good place where I can add, uh, because I'm very much concerned about the integralists who are not integral enough, in my opinion, because they are too much in their heads and uh, uh, split the, the, the question how many angels go on a, on a needle top instead of uh, being more grounded into our present reality and what is needed to be done and find practices for that develop practices for, for being in the world instead of being only turning around in, in the head. And then in the theory, I'm getting tired to read Ken Wilber's books because they are too long and too repetitive. It's, I, I want somebody to, to write the big book in, in a, a leaflet so that I get uh, what he wants to say in about uh, 20, 30 pages. That's enough. So I, 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 I cannot... I, I have an audio book uh, from the religion of tomorrow I have given up. It's just too long. And uh, yeah, and that it becomes more, more, more integral. Ah, and the other thing with the Buddhism, this bias for Buddhism, I always was really, I didn't agree with that, that when you considered yourself an integralist or wanted to be part of it, you sort of were seen as if you should do Buddhist practice. Why, why should you? So that's uh, so the the inside biases which have not been uh, seen, and then since I hear Jeremy, also this insistence on the on the development on in the ups in the vertical line, so it always suggests to be better, become better, better, better. So it's a sort of a value judgment uh, with a development, even if maybe it's not meant, but it sounds like that, and this is uh, yeah feeding into arrogance and in, in our appearing to be very arrogant to other people. So, yeah, that's what I... Kim shared the, some of the instructions with me, so I'll jump in. Can you hear me? It's still hard to hear. How about this? Is that any better? Okay. <laughs> I'll get right on in there. Um, <laughs> So I appreciate what you're sharing, Heidi. Um, and I, I, I think and feel a lot about this head, heart, body perspective. And um, the way that I feel about integral communities is a lot of them are head only, which don't include the body and the emotional experience, which is different from having an emphasis in the mental and including the heart and the body experience because we each have different strengths and weaknesses and it's important I feel that we embody them know who we are and not be ashamed for when we have strengths or weaknesses in different areas but um, also to not exclude the others to continue developing all of them along with emphasizing our strengths taking our roles yeah. um. I want to just say, I wanted to say thanks to um, Ryan for uh, trying out this facilitation, uh, you know, technique with just shorter shares and encouraging that. I'm really interested in that. Um, on a personal side, I want to um, just like celebrate that there may be an experiential facilitator training happening through Integral Online. And if y'all know folks who are um, interested in a short eight week free course, that's something that's trying to, that is being organized in the next week or two. And it'll give me some of the vocab to show up a little bit better in these meetings. So I'm excited about that. Um, and then as far as integral goes from me, one of the things that I'm curious about coming into this uh, culture, I, it sort of dovetails on, um, on, on what Natalie was interested in, which is I'm, I'm new to Zoom as a format. And in general, coming out of sort of eco-village counterculture where there's a little bit more movement and out of equity, um, meeting facilitation trainings where there's a little bit more fundamental questioning of cultural norms around expression and possible oppression. I'm really intrigued by my sense of humans as sort of fundamentally mammalian, like more of a bottom up kind of uh, framework on the world. So to see a lot of the physical culture of integral being 
just from what I've seen, people who are sort of sitting relatively still, and I see this in professional social work areas and other sort of educational norms, but we're not necessarily tending to the animal parts of us while we're engaging in the mental. And I think that's sort of fine if the rest of our life is balanced, but I question how many of us do move our bodies enough or breathe deeply or take care of our food needs or whatnot. So it's been, it, it's been fun for me to, to like watch myself get into these integral discussions and I'm always like eating something. And there's a little background part of me that's like, you're so rude. You're just like not professional. And there's another part of me that's like, no, I should be like eating and stretching. And you know, as long as I can pay attention, the rest of my body can get its needs met. <laughs> you go, Heidi <laughs> and Karen with the mug. Everybody here just wrote mug now. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's my check-in is I'm, I'm curious about that and how or whether that may impact with this increased headiness or, or unbalanced headiness. Because I think we can already have it in our culture a little bit. So that's it for me. Um, I'm going to just reel off a bunch. I think a, a fair few people have kind of said stuff that, that definitely uh, gets, uh, I have beef with like um, Heidi, like the debating about, I think you said the mad angels on a, the head of a pin, I think is something that sort of uh, can drive me crazy and integral in the, uh, the shadow um, thing that Karen mentioned. Um, I think with me, um, on the, on the sort of more minor end, I think there's a bit of, the kind of sometimes what annoys me is talks about the body that don't have like distinctions around them. Like I, I question like, how is this an integral practice and how is this talk of the body not just, um, not just green? And I think as well on the heady side of it is kind of have beef with kind of like lazy definitions. Like um, I guess just like really unnuanced like spiral say, oh, this person is red or oh, this is shadow or this is um, uh, whatever it is, like throwing an integral term out there without actually like rigorously um, seeing what's going on. Like, for example, there's kind of been debate around Jordan Peterson and I've kind of really enjoyed really the debate about what he's actually saying more than like, is he, um, is he integral or is he, is he not? seems a lot more nuanced when it's like really, really broken down. Um, and then on the more meaty side of it, I think, which is related, the lack of debate or the lack of dissent, like at times the, frankly, what seems like kind of ass kissery towards Ken Wilber. Um, like, I think you said this a little bit, Heidi, as well. Like my experience of integral life at times was like relentlessly having the aqua map explained again and again um stuff which always baffled me where i'm like who who is such a beginner on this platform that they have to have to hear that and on the more weighty side of it is which is related to shadow and possibly ken is some of the abuse and trauma and pathology that's happened in the integral community quite a lot of seems to me kind of condensed um fuck ups that in my opinion have never really been dealt with um and i think that's that's a sign to me that some of the things that have been mentioned, like being too in the head or too arrogant or too intellectual, kind of antibody, like really um, shows up in, in what's actually happened. And I think to, that, that stuff has the most um, emotional charge for me. The other stuff's a little bit more like kind of intellectual beef and all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's me. I guess I'll pop in here. Um, so, yeah, there's just a number of, of, of things uh, for my check-in. I mean, um, uh, I guess I would summarize it as a overemphasis on that headiness, as everyone's been saying. Um, from my own terminology or Gebser's terminology, it's sort of this overemphasis on spatial, mental, rational thinking. Um, but... I just kind of want to emphasize that there is an interesting kind of turn in the integral community, although I think it's gaining more traction now between, let's say, Bonita Roy and uh, what she's describing as post-dialectical thinking um, and what in her interview with Tama Mark's podcast, she was describing these kind of existential orientations between structural thinkers and then these sort of post-dialectical thinkers where the structural thinker, she gave this metaphor of um, uh, 
uh, glasses, you know, it's a glass half full, glass half empty metaphor. But um, the structuralist will see, okay, how many glasses are there? How do they relate? Let's say there are three glasses. Um, they'll see three separate items. The exist existentially turned post dialectical thinker kind of sees all of these glasses embedded in sort of a tank of water. And so there's this fluidity and dynamics between the segmentation. And I think that 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 process oriented post dialectical thinking is what can help us get back into the body because it's more active. There's, it, it, it speaks of activity and it brings in temporics into our thinking and brings us back into ourselves. Um, and then I also want to recommend uh, Chris Durkee's essay, Searching for Centaur, Retrieving Integral's Lost Self-Identity from the 2015 Integral Theory Conference in California. It's a really great essay. And I think Chris is sort of honing in on some of these same criticisms about the kind of the top heaviness of integral theory that resonate between myself, Bonita, Chris, and then of course, Gepser's insight into uh, integral consciousness, which is not developmental. So I think all of these things are, are kind of speaking for me uh, for this sort of turn in the integral world. And then of course we have like Jamie Wills uh, video and, and Rebel Wisdom's kind of post-mortem of the integral movement, which was kind of a devastating, um, video, but still, I think, very important to kind of hear all that in context. And I think all of these points everyone's saying, and then everybody that I just mentioned, really kind of resonate together. Um, and I think there's a lot of potential, you know, just kind of calling it out and seeing where it is, and then being able to, to speak to that, and then articulate scholarship and community that isn't doing that, you know, um, I think this, if Interval has any future, this is where it's going to lie. So, Anyway, that's, those are my two cents. Thank you. Phil, do you have any thoughts on the matter you'd like to share? Um, yeah, certainly. Um, I've been, um, I'm, I'm more of a meta thinker. So for me, uh, integral theory is it's just fun thing to look into. Uh, but I also re remind myself often that, uh, you know, as many of have heard and said that it's only a model and uh, it helps us. And there's always kind of all kinds of distinction. And I think my general feeling is, yeah, I feel like there's a bit of a you know, arrogance, um, but that's, that can be just personal in general as well. It's just someone coming from that angle. Um, I can be uh, perceived that arrogant many times in my, my, uh, in my own life. So I, I can understand that. Um, another thing is, um, the mean green me, uh, meme, I think it called, it's called. Another uh, way to relate to it, maybe something more, uh, why, like I actually, actually asked the question to Ken, I don't know if he'll bring it up, but it was like, why is this unfolded that way? Same as like integral is like, to me, it's the emerging, you know, thing that's coming up, let's call it that way. And uh, there was, there was, a, there's this, Green is like the leading edge, sort of in, in the you know the more mainstream culture, um, and why did it unfold that way? Like, there's a lot of pathological talk around it and all kinds of stuff like this. And I think it's interesting, but I'd like to to feel a bit more like okay, like uh, if if there's a shadow and then that's another issue uh, that you some of you pointed out related to it, then I'd like it to be more. Um, looked into or addressed or uh, uh, a proper three to one process or thing like that, you know, with it, like as a collective maybe as well, or coming from different angle. I, I like, I like the framework because it really helps us position ourselves. It, it's not perfect. It's not, I mean, it's quite complete though. It's, it's really hard to, to kind of uh, remove it from your head if you want, even though you want to be in your body, <laughs> you want to do both at the same time. I think that's the idea. Uh, yeah, that's my two cents as well. Thank you. Thank you, Theo. So that was, that was interesting to hear everyone's take because there was a lot of similarity. I mean, almost everyone mentioned this, except for Charles's uh, critique of the bodies thing. Everyone mentioned some kind of like dissociation or too heady and this kind of arrogance that the excessive headiness or intellectualization has kind of dovetailed with. So I thought I would... Um, We'll start this discussion by me asking a question to someone specifically. And this is to Jeremy, who apparently is now going by the name Evolver. No. <laughs> um, 
And, and this, Jeremy, this is going to sound like a, a gotcha question, but that's not my intention. Uh, but this is just how I'm going to frame it for fun. So I, I agree with pretty much what everyone said about the uh, headiness, even the, you know, like Heidi, you mentioned like the bias towards Buddhism or whatever. And, and Buddhism can definitely be a very heady religion. Um, so, so Jeremy, you're one of the most intelligent, intellectual, and articulate people I've ever met in my entire life. Um, you use all kind of big words like diaphanous. I love to hear you talk, and I love your book. So, what exactly? <laughs> so, this is this is the gotcha part, but I don't I don't mean it like that. So, how do you, how do you envision moving forward with like amending this over intellectualism when you yourself are one of the most intellectual people I've ever met? So, how do you like? How do you see those working together? You know. Yeah. Well, geez, I don't even know how to respond to that. Thank, thank you, Ryan. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, uh, it, it, what kind of intellect are we talking about? I mean, the, 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 uh, any kind of classical, um, understanding of world cosmology was brilliant, was genius. I mean, you know, understanding, I don't know, let's look at the, the Aztec calendar and how they understood the movements of the stars, their cosmology, their mathematics. It was brilliant, but they had a different style. There was a completely different world orientation. So I don't really think it's, when we say over-intellectualizing and, and, and too heady, what do we actually mean? We just mean that, that a, uh, a, a particular structure of consciousness is, um, is dominating all of the others. It doesn't mean it can't be excellent in itself. It just means it's, it's, it's speaking for all of the other structures and is not allowing those structures to, to speak for themselves. You know, it's a sort of like, um, it's like being an insomniac and not allowing yourself to dream. It's like, you know, uh, focusing in a totalizing way on one way of thinking and being in the world. So it's really just the totalizing emphasis that causes us problems. I, I mean, yeah, like I, I'm, I'm an academic. I love intellectuals. I'm always defending the, the academic lecture because in the consciousness culture, man, like everybody wants to, to stop and sing some music and like, um, and, but for me, it's like, no, no, no. Like this is a performance, like doing this and speaking and intellectualizing and being in your body up there and talking and connecting ideas. I love it. It's like an art form. So um, so yeah, how do we move forward? I, you know, I just think it, it's, it's that defixation through um, an intensified awareness of these other structures. And we can do this through everything that we've been talking about, what Gebser suggests, just sort of like becoming almost construct aware of ourselves doing it. Um, and there's a particular style of what we mean by intellectualizing in the mental. It's, it's the, the spatializing, it's the organizing things into higher and the lower it's the categorizing it's the kind of mapping everything out on a grid and it, that's a particular style you know it has its place but that's that's the thing for me anyway to, the, the, the discernment here is that style of thinking um, has a particular flavor and an attitude and it just needs to be shrunken down you know it's, it's sort of assuming that it's it's got it you know, and it just needs to kind of be folded into a much larger awareness and not sort of um, taking the reins on trying to order everything. And I think once we see that, maybe if we practice that more, maybe we won't be like, you know, coming off really arrogant and know it all. And oh, we because if your model is, you know, assuming a totalizing worldview that is hierarchical and developmental, where it's kind of, a, even if you're not actively thinking you're superior, the model you're using is like doing that, you know? So there's all these problems with the style of thinking. So I think we should discern maybe between like intellectualizing generally and then styles of intellectualizing. So anyway, great. I hope great. That thanks. Thanks. Sure. That was, that was the uh, underlying thing I was trying to get to with, with the question. So thanks for uh, humoring me with that. Of course. Yeah, go ahead, Natalie. And then we'll have Karen. Cool. Yeah. Not sure how to jump in and, I'll learn um, the way, the methods that y'all have been using. But um, yeah, Jeremy, I really agree. I really appreciate the way that you're framing it, the way that you're mapping it feels really clear um, and it really resonates. Um, and something that I notice uh, that I want to hold gently with the integral perspective and the headiness that's there is the emphasis on the mental. When we reach the integral stage, the emphasis on the mental is so much, is so strong because we're really doing all of this mapping. And that's an important part of this stage. And what my hope is, is that it doesn't become, um, 
exclude uh, mental to the exclusion of the body and the heart, like what you're saying. But um, yeah, just to appreciate that there's other stages um, that are also valuable and um, other modes of being the body and the heart and that emphasis in the mental is, is okay. As long as we're aware of it, we're taking responsibility for it, we're naming it and um, trying to expand. Thanks. Yeah, well, let me start by saying, Jeremy, I totally endorse your defense of the academic lecture as a performance art. I and mean, I have an academic background too. Oh, yes, and there is so much richness there that we do not want to lose. Even while, and then the next step, become construct aware, which I, that's my main takeaway from what you said, Jeremy. Um, to me, I parse that as bringing more consciousness in, and we're talking about um, states of consciousness here, being more aware. And as we become more aware, we're aware, it's all a construct, everything is, and we can become more aware of the larger, kind of like seeing the three glasses of water as in a larger tank with water flowing in and out of everything. And I want to go from there to what my big central passion here is, is we need I think we need to change the model, we need to change the whole metaphor, and this goes through Ken Wilber back to Gebser. And Jeremy, I would love to have a, a really serious head-on session with you. I think we need to go back and retranslate some of Gebser's terms, because I think the, 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 the structure stages are real. This is evolution starting with the Big Bang. I mean, it's real, there's no escaping it. But we need to somehow change the whole metaphor for us and then as we take it out into the world. So it's not a value or a ranking because any way we present it now, it sounds like we're saying the higher stages are more evolved, i.e. better. And this is part of why people at Amber feel so attacked. They are feeling like their existence is under mortal threat. We need to change the whole metaphor. And Ryan, you and I have briefly discussed this couple months ago, like, can we like take the evolutionary state, you know, the, the, the structure stages, can we like turn that on its side and make it a rainbow spectrum so no one is better than any other? Somehow we've got to change the entire metaphor. And this is a really huge piece of Ken Wilber's structure. I mean, I don't think he's wrong about any of them, about the map or the main pieces, but we've got to change the whole metaphor before we go out into the larger world with it, or we are going to just further alienate the people at red and amber and blue and green, and we're going to end up with more ISIS's, local ISIS's instead of fewer. So this is kind of, would be my core issue here. Um. Are you guys hearing us any better? Uh, I found that there was a little, okay, beautiful. Let me know if it gets quiet. Um, <clears throat> Karen, uh, uh, following on your share, um, I think of a couple of things. One of them is uh, language in two different, in two different places. Uh, a, partly when you talk about shifting it to its side, I've thought about how the use of the word higher order is, a little bit muddy just because for so many people like a higher good or like it immediately gets transferred into value so i think that's that's one small simple way to, to change um the impact of how it's talked about with just a word and um if we just chose a different word and it could be larger i think larger is a little more neutral than higher and lower in our usage in english anyway and the other thing is it reminds me of um a conversation that um I had in an NVC setting a couple months ago where, anyway, um, I don't have to explain the conversation, but the point is that the, um, I'm trying to be succinct here, Ryan. <laughs> I appreciate your guidance at the beginning. Um, but the, the question in my head is, is there a shadow that we're starting to name, but that people are being motivated unconsciously by a sense of not being enough or wanting to be right. And that that may have created this language. And I think that's a really common psychological wounding. So it seems really plausible to me that that might be something that if named enough, if accepted enough, the rest of this tendency might go away.
Um, <clears throat> Tim, that, that resonates, like the not wanting to be enough. Um, competitiveness reminds me of how the integral stage uh, is a re, um, reintegrating of orange, which has that achievement mentality. And we're really working on a lot of that orange shadow that we left behind in green, that, that wanting to be enough, that achievement. Um, so great to bring that to consciousness. Yeah, I want to say that that was, that was really like apparent to me when I first got on the, the integral calls was this real sense of like uh, orange that I needed to be enough or something or like I was around people and they were like really kind of high capacity and all this kind of stuff. I think one of the things I found most touching was realizing that um, a lot of people in the in the call had like various kind of struggles. Like I remember a beige call and like everybody came out with these like really strong beige uh, difficulties and um, so I definitely agree with um, what Tim and Natalie just said like I think there is some kind of um, unconscious battle that goes on in integral where it's kind of on the one hand there's a lot of really great orange like genuinely wanting to be better and to do good in the world but then there's also I think the other side which is this really humbling bit where you're kind of riding the integral wave and there's all this excitement and you're the cutting edge and all this kind of stuff and then like a day later, you're like uh, kind of bit slapped back down to like, oh man, I'm having a really like red struggle day or um, whatever level it is. And kind of really appreciating that um, like not only are the levels all valid, but they're, they're still like really valid uh, for us. Like the lower levels aren't just like, oh yeah, amber or blue or whatever. You know, there are these people out there. It's kind of like that stuff is still... Uh, alive and a struggle um inside of us and if there's a talk about metaphor i think it it needs to like have less of a dualism of kind of us versus them rather than kind of um the way we're going to talk to blue or succeed with any of these levels is by being more more of them which is actually uh pretty difficult i think it's difficult being embodied but also intellectually like how does blue actually think how 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 do they think that i'm not actually appreciating um yeah can i jump in just a second um i think yeah this to me resonated a lot with uh, a sort of sensitivity sensitivity avoidance maybe coming from this kind of complicated situation we're dealing with right now um and, and maybe that's sometimes felt as arrogance uh, from the integral movement or for integral thinkers. Uh, something I've been thinking about. I don't have any more specifics about that. Another thing I wanted to uh, respond to uh, is uh, we've, we've been delving into an intellectual capacity in academia for most of our lives. I mean, that's where you know, academia kind of resides. Uh, we, we have yet to have a I mean, depending on what kind of curriculum you've been through, if you've been to a different kind, maybe you'll have more experiential, more embodied, more um, uh, into arts or all kinds of, of, of different approaches. But um, most, most of us, I think we're, we're really heady people uh, as we are brought up and into education system. Um, and then, yeah, another big element is this kind of aversion to hierarchies in all kinds of ways. And, and that is completely understandable. Um, if you don't have some of a perspective that brings you into the you know greater scheme of it all uh, of the universe uh, and doesn't look at it from uh, only individual perspective or group perspective, then it's hard to kind of like not um, how would I say it? Uh, it's kind of normal to be avert, avert uh, to have problems with certain kinds of hierarchies of oh, some people are better than others and so on and so on. Um, it's uh, I, I, at that point I'm like, what's the other metaphor that we have? And there's, I, I've seen also other tools uh, using um, you know the the different uh, means or the different perspective as as different way to uh, you know get into uh, conversation with them. Uh, marketing model as well, if you want. I didn't like that so much, but I think it's a useful tool that to communicate um, different aspect of of certain theory. Often. I like when I tr tr talk to someone new about it, I just think, oh, there's this kind of like movement in the world, you know, like post-conventional, a pre-conventional, conventional, pre -conventional, conventional like people get that and it, it kind of helps to start the discussion. 
um, and then I see how far we can go with it. it, it sometimes it doesn't lead far, sometimes it leads further. Uh, it's how you can test the water of how much you can talk about these things. I don't think you can address them like right on though. Um, and that's probably one of the big, you know, uh, complaint about integral. If you go right in and dwell right in without kind of being immersed by yourself or looking at it from, I feel like the way I feel is you get, you go towards integral because you're uh, attracted. Yeah, I'm done. Theo, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, but I did, I did want to ask you something. You said uh, sensitivity avoidance at the beginning. Yeah. Could, could you just clarify what you mean by that? Um, it's, it's something that I've been perceiving in the integral is that maybe, um, you know, we say green is the sensitivity uh, meme, more right. sensitive, more um, uh, caring. And then there's been a reaction, oh, we, sh we shouldn't be caring so much because it, it creates all these issues because we, we, we feel we, we're all in the same field and something like, I don't have the, the language to explain it properly, but it's this thing that I've been feeling, maybe there's a bit of, you know, we're trying to go way too far from it and then uh, lose, lose touch with, you know, uh, being uh, more sensitive to each other's perception, uh, f feelings, and um, and then yeah, often of, of you'll hear like, oh, then you get into a group and you hear everybody's feeling and there's no action. And it's like, yeah, I've been there, I've done that. <laughs> I know the feeling. Um, and, and at the same time, you you want to still kind of respect that it needs to be addressed. So I think with mm -hmm. that, what we do is often with a, you want everybody to be heard but it doesn't mean everybody's going to be heard. How would I put it? That, that's the paradox. Like, it's just, it, it's difficult. It's really complex to get to those uh, um, sensing mechanisms, sensing approaches, I should say, that are um, able to feed from everyone's perspective. So it, sound, it kind of sounds like, kind of like the integral in, a, in trying to distinguish itself from green may not have integrated that sensitivity adequately. And so kind of as, as a backlash, it kind of is a little bit too insensitive and rejects too much green. Is that basically? Yeah. Yeah. I, I keep hearing about it and I have this kind of reaction myself. So I, 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 I totally get it. Yeah. Uh, and, and that needs to be worked at. There like a lot of, I had a, an encounter recently with someone who's really strongly feminist but radical and it was like really difficult to have a conversation with that person i realized oh okay it's affecting me okay what's going on there so i wanted to look into it yeah. right great thank you uh charles and heidi do you have any oh. i like first so i'm i was reminded it was was theo said uh, there was once in the integral life the the question uh, of a person how many here have no higher education education and uh, it seems that most of the people who are interested in integral theory at least we have all higher education and at least a uh, high school or what university or something that seems to be the attractiveness and this is already uh, giving a problem for other people to 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 feel that they can join us and the other thing came to my mind, uh, Karen, you say to, to put the vertical thing uh, uh, horizontal. I had in mind the Enneagram, which is in a circle. With the Enneagram, you feel when you discover your Enneatype, oh, I wouldn't like to be that type, but you have no indication which type would be really better. So there is not this innate, um, idea that some other uh, uh, how do you say part would be better than even then you have right and left you know when you put it on on this scale and right and left is already very much very much uh, heavy heavily loaden with uh, um, sig signification how do you say with meaning and so uh, maybe find a way to put it in a circle i don't know Go ahead, Charles. Your uh, mute is Charles. Charles. Turn on your mic. Uh, if we speak of higher education, that's a hierarchical concept, is it not? 
Uh, Karen, I'm wondering if you if you want to do away with with the hierarchical aspect of integral theory, if you don't destroy the whole thing. Ken distinguishes carefully between dominator hierarchies and growth hierarchies. And he says, if, if you deny growth hierarchies, we're denying ourselves because we ourselves have developed in a growth hierarchy from less complex stages of physicality and consciousness to more inclusive, broader, more complex stages of being. I don't see how we get away from the idea of growth hierarchies and still have an integral philosophy. Perhaps you can help me on that. Thank you. Yes, I don't see us as needing to destroy any structures. We need the structures. Um, the, we, we, in fact, the higher our embodied consciousnesses go up these structure stages, I mean, the more, the more structure we need. And yes, I totally agree with Ken Wilber that we need, these are the growth hierarchies, the deve developmental hierarchies are absolutely essential to higher and higher stages of consciousness. What we need is a metaphor that allows us to include the structures in a larger context that does away with value ranking or that allows us to escape the value ranking, not so much among ourselves, although I think we need it ourselves because that would address some of the arrogance in our collective shadow. But as we, as integral starts to filter out to the larger world through people like us, we need a way, a, a metaphor that is viscerally real to us as we reach out that does not automatically alienate people who are at certain of the um, growth levels. We all have those levels in us. They're part of us. We live them. Um, we, we need to radically change the metaphors we use. We don't need to destroy any structure. Just like I use sometimes the metaphor of a spine for levels, you know, structure levels. Um, just because a spine in my lumbar area is lower than a, a, a vertebra in my cervical spine doesn't mean it's lower in value or in importance or in necessity to the whole. But we're still, it, you, every piece of the structure is absolutely essential. And when we get into the high, the really high stages of consciousness, you know, the, the subtle causal non-dual, we see that it is all a perfectly an expression of the totality. And so maybe what we need to do is reach more for those higher levels of consciousness where we innately experience it all as essential and precious. The, as the Buddha, the Buddha, I'm sorry, you know, go Buddhist for a moment on you. Um, the infinite preciousness of all that exists. Um, if we can reach those levels of awareness and then change our metaphors. Metaphors are very powerful when we're communicating. Um, does that, that's kind of rambling, but I'm trying to respond to you, Charles. So I'll stop there for now. So what, what is the metaphor that you would like to see changed? I'm, I'm not quite clear on that. Um, the developmental, uh, the higher, the, the uh, it's specifically the structure stages where the later evolving ones are higher in the sense that they include more awareness. They are capable of supporting higher levels of, for instance, community. Um, as we go up the structure stages, you know, from beige to purple, you know, on, on up, literally our sense of who is us and versus a them and expands necessarily. I mean, you can't explain to somebody at beige or purple that every human being that, that you know we you know that every human being is endowed with certain inalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Somebody who's at that conceptual beige or purple stage is not going to get it, however you explain it to them. So the high, there is a certain necessary hierarchy there. It's developmental. It's it's hard baked into existence. How do we concept? I'm still struggling with this. How do we conceptualize that ourselves so that as we're talking to say amber or blue or green, we don't alienate them by saying, oh, we're at these higher stages. So they're, they're going to hear, oh, they're saying they're superior. We, we need to, you know, I'm, I'm groping myself. We need a fundamentally different metaphor that includes the developmental hierarchies as Ken Wilber has articulated them in a way that 
nobody reads as valuing or ranking. And I'm not there. I'm just starting to try to formulate this to myself. So this is probably a bit chaotic. And thank you all. This is part of what I'm hoping we can articulate here. I hope that was clear and not totally confusing. Thank you, Karen. Yes, um, I wanted to jump in here too as a response as well, uh, not only to what Charles was saying, but what you mentioned earlier about the need to go back and really look at these models and really try to find new metaphors from them. Uh, you know. At, you know, I keep reiterating, hopefully it's not too redundant, but, you know, in, in Gepser's writing, you know, he does not see the structures as developmental. And yet he still has some emergent threads that are happening in the structures. There's an unfolding dimensionality. There's the kind of the coming online of the ego and self-consciousness and spatial consciousness. But there, there has to be room for non-linearity and discontinuity in our metaphors. And if we don't, we will always fall kind of victim to our own style of thinking, which ends up being very linear. So I would just recommend just as an, an approach, it, um, uh, Gebser is a good, a good way to kind of clean uh, your, your, your cognitive capacities because he is ruthlessly, um, in some sense, deconstructing the linear and developmental in such a phenomenologically fundamental way that every time you read him, uh, he's, it makes it very difficult to kind of speak about emergence, but he's still kind of groping for it himself. So I think reading authors that are, and scholars, and trying to find metaphors that are trying to articulate this non-linear emergence is so vital. I mean, it, we can look back and say, okay, here's a purple individual or somebody at the magical structure and you know we may get inalienable rights right we may understand that concept we may understand oh you know i'm self-actualized we may get those kinds of concepts and understandings of ourselves but we may not get at all their orientation that might be completely lost from us that needs to be reintegrated and relearned there's a there's a kind of a going back to go forward so there's this movement left and right already the model is getting the sort of dynamic different shape rather than just let's go up the steps and every step includes the previous steps. It's not that simple. Um, and no matter how many times we add different lines of development wrapped in, it's still that fundamental style of thinking. So I think we really need a fundamental style of discussing temporics and emergence without relying on this very kind of linear striated approach that's useful and, and, and in our classification systems and in our scientific models, we need it. But we're talking about a new way of thinking and a new concept that has only been kind of just introduced to the past 50, 60 years that people are still trying to figure out. Um, and that was Gepter's point in the 40s. And, and I think we're still struggling with that. How do we say this in a way that is in an a perspective or interval way? Yeah, thank, thanks, Jeremy. Um, I guess a, qu a question I'd have for, for the group is, you know, we're, we're talking about this similar theme of um, questioning the hierarchical or judgmental or arrogant part of integral. Does anyone here like actually disagree with this? I know Charles, you had an objection, but does anyone else want to, you know, have an have issue with what we're talking about here? I'd be curious to welcome some divergent perspectives. I have, I have, I like advocating for hierarchy. I'm not sure if that's what you, you're asking, Ryan. Sorry, could you say that again, Paul? Like, I think I, I am feeling the divergent end in the sense that I'm sort of, um, I want to advocate for hierarchy, or I sort Great. of feel like that that kind of comes in. And I guess Roger. it's fine. Um, I mean, I agree. I agree with what um, various people have said about being more inclusive. Like, I do think there needs to be more reaching down. Um, and, and embodying all this stuff, but I, I'm sort of like thinking of things just from a somewhat intellectual level that you, it's hard for me to not be able to great, like value something that seems to be higher than another. For example, blue and red. If I compare the ability to be compassionate, for example, like red is basically limited to, I can be compassionate about myself um, and power rules. So, red and blue are like equally valid they're both equally needed but it does kind of seem that as you go up the as you go up the stages um the level of value itself increases so i think it's kind of 
this difficult thing of holding the horizontal growth and the vertical. And there's also part of me was like, well, I look at integral theory and I look at various models of development and evolution and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, it's hard not to see um, a degree of like linear development to some extent, like a six-year-old becomes a 10-year-old becomes an 18-year-old and all this kind of stuff. And it seems like, uh, I guess it's this thing, I don't know, I, I'm, I, I'm being a bit of a devil's advocate. Like it just makes me think that there's all this other stuff. Like how do you grapple that and not lose, maybe this is a bit what Charles was saying. How do you not lose all of this distinction by saying that there isn't, uh, isn't this increase on some level? Go ahead, Heidi, and then Karen, and welcome, have, Max. Yeah, I have the impression that we are talking about different things. Uh, Paul, you are talking about the content uh, of the theories and so on, and we are talking how to bring it into the world and how to find the right way to, to, to talk about it and to make it understandable to, to other people. And as long as we are connecting value to it in this way we are doing, we are saying we are arrogant and blah, 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 and we seem arrogant to the people. So that means that this way is not functional, but it doesn't mean to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We can still be informed and know these things, but we need another, as Karen says, another metaphor, another image, another way of speaking about the things. Uh, the content uh, without necessarily completely changing the content. That's nobody asked that, but to talk in a different way about this content. And uh, yeah, it's two different things we are talking about. Yes, agreed. We definitely do not want to lose um, what Ken Wilber has, and so many others have articulated about this linear structure, like a one-year-old eventually becomes a five-year-old, becomes a 10-year-old. There's a neurological development that allows the Piaget stages of, you know, pre-operational, uh, concrete operational, formal operational. This is hardwired into our neurology and it's in time and we experience time linearly. We don't dare lose this structure. And one of the most wonderful things Ken Wilber did for me way back in the 80s was to put this together with cultural development in time. And I'm a historian, I'm a cultural historian. It was one of the most powerful concepts I think that's ever landed on me in my life. We don't dare lose that structure. Just like we don't wanna say, oh, um, structure, I mean, that's the mean green meme, you know, say any structure is oppressive, so you throw out structure, well, let's throw out our spines, we'd be puddles on the floor. We know we need to keep this, we don't dare lose it. What I'm, what I think we're, we're, we're I feel ourselves moving toward is how do we include this in a larger unity and an, and the, an awareness of a, a larger unity that is what they call spir spiral warriors where we are aware of these structures in ourselves. And we got a magnificent start on this in our Sunday morning Zoom chats when we went through the structure stages, beige, magenta, and so on. And we talked about our own experience of them in our lives. So as we, the consciousness goes down as well as up, if we're going to have a hierarchy, the consciousness goes in all directions, sideways, in three dimensions, four dimensions, we include it all. In a conscious, in a larger unity, and a consciousness of a larger unity, and what I'm feeling now, as we become more aware of these levels, the colors levels, in our own lives, and befriend them in our own lives, and find where they're healthy in us and where they're not healthy in us, then maybe we'll be able to speak from them to people when we at the appropriate level, spiral warriors, and maybe then we'll be able to generate metaphors that serve us better. And I want to add to that, uh, we don't even necessarily keep uh, the linearity of, of the developmental uh, structures. I do think that some people maybe are first in green and then develop orange capacities. And uh, I, it, it, it sounds to me a little bit like a fundamentalism to claim that this comes all in this in this uh, sequence. I do believe that a child normally uh, goes on four feet uh, before it goes on two feet. There are some limits to that, but I think in adult development, I don't think we need this uh, linearity. 
And so why not uh, say, yeah, maybe, maybe not. I mean, that for me would be more integral. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, just a short note or two what Heidi is saying. I don't, I, I yeah, I do want to question that. Does, you know, they, they say ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny and it's like, okay, an individual grows, goes through developmental stages. Therefore, we can think about entire societies as going through developmental stages in the same way. I, I don't know if the metaphors work so well when we start talking about sociological and anthropological levels of entire groups of people. And this is where I think the postmodern turn has something that Integral hasn't metabolized, which is sort of deconstructing that linear narrative of the 20th century. Um, I don't think that will survive. That We don't just need new metaphors. We need new forms of thinking and new concepts that do away with the linearity while retaining the emergence and the complexity. Um, I don't know what that looks like exactly, but I think as a sort of an existential orientation, that's where we have to start as integralists. Um, the whole idea with, with the sort of linear approach to development and why it's so, it, 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 it trips up on itself with these same problems, whether we're talking about integral or, or elsewhere, is that sort of spatial thinking when we say like, okay, down below us, we need to reach back down below us as if it's something apart. That was the whole point of the, the Sunday discussion. No, they're all in you. And what kind of orientation do you need? What kind of metaphor and style of thinking and conceptualizing do you need to start with that? That everything is in you. That you don't need to reach down or reach far back. There's a sort of spreading out spatial thinking distantiates us from these these other dimensions of ourselves it's very useful for for understanding the material world but when we use it as you're saying in this exclusive totalizing way and try to allow it to inform everything we understand about development and growth and emergence and consciousness then we get we get tripped up on some of these problems so it's a whole style of thinking which is ironic because this is a structure of consciousness that Gebser talks about, and yet integralists don't seem to be very aware of it at all. They're just sort of employing it and deploying it. They're thinking spatially, and they're not even aware that they're doing it. So this, this is my kind of like, okay, let's, <laughs> where are the postmodern neo-Marxists? That's my aggressive stance there. We don't even realize we're using spatial thinking, which is a fundamental failure of us actually being aware of our structure of consciousness as mental perspectival beings. And that's Gebser's insight for us, for me anyway. You, you know, what's, what's funny, uh, Jeremy, was that when you were talking about that, I was visualizing, to use an uh, Avengers uh, image, like Thanos with the uh, infinity gauntlet and like all of the stones in there, it would be like the integral gauntlet of having all the stages, like, like yes. you own all of them. You have to con collect the infinity stones of the stages, you know? Anyway, uh, Charles, I'll, I'll let you speak in a second, but I just wanted to say uh, welcome, Max, and just, uh, quickly fill you on the discussion, Max. So we're talking about the topic for today is your biggest disagreement with integral theory. And we've, we're talking about this issue with the hierarchy and the linearity and new models or images to depict what that would look like. So uh, we'll have Charles go and then Max, uh, I want to give you a chance to speak um, since you haven't spoken yet. So go ahead, Charles. Charles, turn on your mic. Uh, yeah, in response to Jeremy, uh, it's, it's a fundamental insight that we have all of those structures within us all the time. That's what transcend and includes means. We, we don't throw out the structure, we eliminate the view from that structure. So the worldview, for example, at red doesn't serve us anymore at amber, so that gets dropped. But the structure and the fundamental features are included. Now suppose an individual is at, is at integral. You can access any part of red or, or amber that you want to, or maybe you're forced to, or compelled to in a given situation. For example, at amber, people think in terms of uh, narrative and, and story, cosmic events that uh, account for the world we live in. We can access that, any, that at any time to write a novel or, or to talk to uh, a 10-year-old who believes in the Bible. We, we can go back to that 
uh, to that frame of reference because, as you say, it's always with us. But we don't live there anymore. Uh, we don't uh, normally regress unless something really traumatic happens to us. So I wonder if, if that answers your question about acknowledging that the earlier stages are still with us and honoring them. Hmm. Uh, to some degree, but the transcendent include, I don't think uh, is as totalizing as we assume it to be. It's easy to say, okay, when you're a kid, you know, you believe you read the Bible and the stories, but to actually get the complex, the complexity of the mythical structure of consciousness, we haven't integrated that. That's been disintegrated. That's been removed. And this is why I think Gebser's model is so much more useful for us in, in, in checking our hubris because, you know, with, with a lot of the movement of the structures and this increase in kind of waking up into the scientific worldview, there's a belittling. There's a, there's, okay, well, we used to believe that as kids, you know, now we've moved into, an, and I still have that capacity, but now I'm an adult. Um, Gebser's fundamentally saying that that's, it's not like that, actually. If, if you think that's what myth is, then you, you have disintegrated it. You've discluded it and belittled it, belittled it according to the mental structures. So there's still a kind of priority in the mental, which is the problem, to, to actually see the intensity of that worldview as a living ontology a living world space that has been mastered that we would fail actually to, to thrive in with the mental structure. Um, that is the challenge that I think that brings in this nonlinearity uh, and the complexity. So, so yes, I think there is room to say that, yeah, okay, the, the mythical is sort of two dimensional. We we're bringing in that in a kind of latent way. We kind of need that to do the mental, to do this three dimensional world spacing. Yes, in a sort of a latent way, but then in other ways, it's, it's not integrated, which is just what I mean about the, the complexity of it, right? Like we need to have an understanding of growth and development, but then also the nonlinearity of it, where we need to kind of go backwards too, you know, and, and reintegrate things. So um, maybe it won't be a problem for an integral person, though, with the gauntlet, and they're just sort of, you know, they're no longer, their primal locus is no longer in the spatial perspectival mental and they're just all of these things and they can bring them all online but we're still very much in this transitional space between the mental and the integral so our our bias is always going to be uh the mental structure and we're going to be interpreting everything according to the mental structure and we have to constantly sort of disentangle ourselves from that and i think that's our hardest challenge but um yeah let's just be fancy what well, one snap with the integral infinity gauntlet and everyone automatically becomes integral. Wouldn't that be an amazing uh, <laughs> wish? Um, so I, I know there were a few comments that were questioning Charles's statement. Um, but first, I wanted to give Max, if you want to say anything, give your two cents on the subject. And also, Max, uh, we're um, limiting our shares to two minutes and 30 seconds. Okay. Um, can you guys hear me all right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I was just listening to um, <clears throat> what you were saying about how you can uh, grow in these different ways and it's not always linear. <clears throat> and I just thought about um, just a, a, something that might connect to that is like Kundalini awakening is um, uh, one form of how the energy rises through the chakras and it goes through these, you know, each individual chakras or whatever, but there are also like different forms of Kundalini awakening where like sometimes for certain individuals, it will start at a certain chakra and then it will go and have to go down and then it will have to go back up and through different nadis and whatever. So it's not always a clear linear process because there are different uh, types, you know, as what Wilbur might call them. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of true that it, it's, it's not always so straightforward just because there are these uh, hierarch hierarchical stages. Um, but uh, one of the things that I wanted to sort of uh, bring up was, um, yeah, with, with Wilbur's work, um, kind of the difference between hard and soft data. So like hard data is like Piaget, where it shows 
you know, there are, there's, there's actual data that shows that the, these, these uh, stages within Piaget's model exist. But with state like stages uh, in Wilbur's model, stages there there doesn't it's sort of like soft data. It's like, oh uh, well these 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 different lines seem to link together because they look similar, but it's soft. It's like blurry. Is 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 it really a like? What would what would be the difference between? like a line and then a stage i mean wouldn't a stage just be a thicker line or a better line or something a more complex line so that's one of the things that i've thought about um um and, and just it's a little unclear to me when i read wilbur um and then also states um states as an independent axis um what, couldn't you say that a state is just mere is is instead of being an independent axis from stages that a state would just be the upper right quadrant of a stage so it's like you it's have about these two three you missed three seconds max so you want to speak that thought yeah um would a would a quadrant just be the upper right would a would a state just be the upper right of a stage uh, to me I don't understand why a state necessarily is, it isn't connected with, with, with stages. So yeah, that's it. Great. Thanks, Max. Unfortunately, we only have 15 minutes left. I don't know what happened to the time. This has been, been blowing by. Um, so maybe, maybe we'll, we'll just go into a closing round and uh, people can give their response to some of the issues. And maybe we can do this again next week since there seems to be a lot of material here. Whoever okay. wants to go. Ryan, I will, when I go see the second Avengers movie, I will keep in mind when I see Thanos, who is far and away the best character. Okay, let's think of a positive version of Thanos. Um, I have a specific, I see things specifically differently from some of the way Jeremy presented them. And I would love to chew into that with Jeremy at maybe in a, in a future session, but I need to get far more on top of Gebser but this is very rich material. I have a pretty detailed map of Ken Wilber's map. He does not present it very coherently. He needs a ruthless editor. I totally agree with Heidi. I think if he did a next edition, he would, we would all be more clear on some of this stuff, but yes, let's chew into this. I think we can sort this all out. Let's do it, folks. I can jump in. I find these conversations really, very enlightening and uh, adding to my own ideas and also to the understanding which I get from what you are saying. And what I come to understand lately in my life is that we are much more living in all the levels we have already reached than we think. We think we are grounded in integral or somewhere. And from there, and from this perspective, we are living, we are, we are not, we are not. We are living from, uh, in, during the day uh, in a continuous mix, not mix, but a sequence of, of, of different levels. And, and we probably don't even know this from what level we see our, or what I don't like even level because it already is in hierarchy, um, that we are much more uh, coming from the other stages than we would admit. And this is a quite of a, um, astonishing surprise for me to realize that in my own life. So. Um, I have a symbol to kind of uh, sum up some of this larger versus higher uh, spatial rather than linear and hierarchical um, thing that I wanted to share to sum it up. So I feel like we've been using this triangle, imagine all the little triangles are in there too of the stages where we're starting with beige and we're moving up to integral and we end up being very top heavy, very mental and it's easy for us to like tip and fall flat on our sides um, from that perspective. But if we flip it upside down and we're actually looking at um, a spatial increasing of breadth uh, rather than um, developing uh, a hierarchical uh, thing. 
um, then we end up developing like a stronger foundation. So imagine that like each time we go down, we're adding all of the stages each time and developing more understanding of all of the stages. So each side of the triangle includes the same as every other side of the triangle. And that helps to solve that spatial problem. And um, however it challenges Ken's um, idea that as we move into larger complexity, um, we have less span and more depth. I feel like we have more span and more depth each time we move. I, I have a, a quick um, walk my end uh, um, note here. I think, yeah, I, I like this idea of space related, related thinking. Um, in general, we use it a lot. It's just hard not to because the language is done. That it, it's it's been formed that way. And maybe we there's other languages that don't speak at all about this in a totally different way. Like I'm French speaking as well, so I can relate to two languages and have different models of the world because of that. And so uh, I, I I like the idea of yeah developing a new metaphor, uh, developing different approach. I think we need to develop as many approach that is needed to communicate something to someone. Obviously, uh, it's not always easy to. Uh, bring about this message. Uh, Ken did a really good work in his own way uh, to be as an integral thinker, the way it's been uh, called as, as uh, an emerging emerging self, let's call it that way. Um, I, I'm personally not always clear about, you know, all the, the color structure, all the different structures in itself. I find them useful, find them useful. And then I go from there. Uh, I'm always curious. I like to hear about other um, perspective. Uh, maybe I'll look into more Gebster and see what he, he says. Um, and uh, yeah, that's my, my final note. Um, I was going to say, I really like, I think there is something about the way we talk about it. Like at Natalie, just having the, the pyramid I find useful because to me, and I guess <laughs> this is a bit of my stance, that there is these levels going up, but it's like the lower levels are in some ways bigger or they have more horizontal um size like the, you know the lowest one would be beige so in many ways it's the biggest kind of bedrock and um yeah i really kind of enjoyed the debate it sort of seems like really hashing out the details i agree with everybody that's spoken on so much and there's also part of me like getting fired up about the disagreement because it seems kind of fruitful there's part of me that my stance is a bit because i i agree with um, various people's emphasis about needing more going on at the bottom that actually we we need to work a lot more on the bottom than perhaps normal integral would say but on the other side of it my stance is a little bit like I hear some people in the group and I'm a bit like um, what what I hear is like very green like the way we're talking about it, the kind of not being too intellectual not being too hierarchical of uh, you know, like the, the, the lower levels to not um, devalue them. And I'm like, in my stance, I'm like, that's great. That's like, but I, I shift it to saying that basically I hear we need more green in integral. Um, and I'm not saying that's right. That's just like where my my mind goes. And I think that's part of me as well. Like I've sort of listening to, to you, Jeremy, talk about Gebs and stuff. But there's a big part of me. I think I'm sort of like, my stance is, I'm kind of needing convincing that some of this isn't, green some of the intellectuals that go atop it and i also think there's something about I, I don't know integrating green to make green even more part of integral that i'm really on board with and also i kind of feel my greenishness now of being like i'm really open to i feel ambiguous about it and i think it's a really interesting topic and also i'm not exactly sure what my my judgment is even around it um so I enjoy dancing around with the ambiguity. And I also enjoy just like slapping my red mark and just being like, bang, I think that is so green. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah, that's me. I agree with Paul. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of green conversation here this morning. And, uh, and that's probably appropriate because out of green comes integral. Um, uh, the idea of going out into the world with our uh, hopefully integral uh, way of looking at the world what was a, a big theme today. And I, I would like to pose the question, to whom are you going to talk? 
to whom are you going to speak integral? It's not going to be infrared, magenta, and amber. They don't get it. They, they don't get the concept we're talking about. That is, if the integral theory is, is sound on this point. Um, so whom do integralists talk about? They're going to talk about people like us who are, who are transitioning from green to integral. They're going to talk to people who have already uh, experienced a whiff of integral. Those are the folks you talk to about. Otherwise, if you're talking about people at, at other levels, Amber, for example, you just listen. Tr take, the, take their role and try to grok how they see things, values, um, science, the world, belief systems, uh, group identity from their point of view. That's, that's how we grow. And we cannot hope uh, to have them uh, swallow what we're saying. So um, that question, to, to whom will we speak and how will we speak as integralists? Maybe we can take that up another time. Thanks a lot to Ryan for organizing this. It's been fun. My pleasure. I am having so freaking much fun right now. Like, so I just want to say like, Ryan, like, man, you, we like cracked the nut. <laughs> like the last five or 10 minutes, I feel so much energy in this conversation. I'm really glad at the idea that we'll come back to this next week. I'm curious to know how we can keep honoring the divergent, really important concepts that are coming up and uh, either address them or, or uh, you know, keep coming back into an integrated sense so that we don't have too much undigested stuff floating out at one time as far as an overwhelm standpoint. I, um, I, there's so many things I want to talk about more, so I'm going to just enjoy not talking about it and not responding to some of the things. Um, oh, it's so hard, but anyway, thank you. <laughs> I'll stop with that. <laughs> I would suggest that you uh, write what your conclusions are in the chat and I will then uh, copy the chat and put it in the, uh, uh, where I uh, publish the, the video. So uh, would be a good idea. So we, next time we can go there and see what, what was going on. But you have to do it while we are still in the room. So, or afterwards you put your, your comment in the, in the Damiano platform where there is not much movement, I see. In fact, if I can footnote or add to that, um, I want to suggest that like three word uh, footnotes to comments that you made or issues or topics you feel were unaddressed or incomplete to add those in the comments line of what she said, because that will be able to get us right back into this conversation with very little extra work we'll be able to remember. I've written down a couple notes of things people have said that I'd love to chat with about, um, but I encourage other people to do that too, just to help us be able to re-enter the conversation quickly. Great ideas, everyone. Uh, who hasn't uh, given their checkout summary? And hi, Ronald. Yeah, I could uh, just say that uh, I, what, what I want to know is how, how do you measure it? How do you measure somebody's stage? Um, you know, one of the ways is to ask them questions. Okay. But I want to know, you know, how you could measure it with, you know, uh, an MRI, how you could measure it like w with, with art or something. You, you watch a kid grow up and at first they're just painting, you know, scribbles and then they paint people. And then maybe they eventually learn how to put in, perspective it's very clear with that you know how you can see how these added dimensions of perspective are happening uh but with with stages a lot of the times it's kind of sounds like gobbledygook like somebody's at a this stage or a that stage and you know it it's it i want to know how you measure it and uh m more than just saying you know the types of words that comes out of people's mouths I want to know, you know, how you can physically measure it and, and, and how you can subjectively measure it. And then, yeah, I mean, and then maybe 
document somehow that this is a new line. It's a line that incorporates a lot of other lines. That's what a stage is. But but to, to me, the stages seem very blurry in a way because I don't, it's like, it's not very connected to, to me, it doesn't line up with, with hard science and, 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 and a clear directive to how it's measured. Um, so yeah, that's my two cents. Did, did everyone go? Jeremy, did you go? Uh, no, I didn't go yet, but um, the three words that I have in the chat are, uh, well, three phrases. <laughs> uh, spatial thinking, temporics, and process thinking, and imminence. And um, yeah, I just wanted to like read one line from my book, which is sort of the takeaway, how are we expressing these metaphors? Um, Gebser has the concept of the sphere, and I like it. I'm not totally attached to it. But just a, a, a line from my book that I think sums this up and like the infinity gauntlet I love, but <laughs> I write, um, in the rolling thunder of the imminent present, all that we are, all that we have been, and all that we could be is radically with us. Time is whole, and therefore you are whole. And what if we related to, to all of these different stages in that way? What kind of models and systems and styles of thinking and images would come from that practice um and this is sort of a practice of temporic so i guess that's my my focus which is um it seems like trying to express this in a new way including temporics and emergence in a new way is exciting all of us and this idea of kind of going back and, and looking for metaphors and trying to find new new forms of statement uh, you know, my, my, my takeaway with my own work and that I see here and everybody is go with what is exciting and energizing your whole being to open up and explore. That's where the efficient structure of consciousness is coming online and wants to kind of figure it out. So um, I'm just sort of sharing my own enth enthusiasm here. So thank you. And Ryan, I did see Avengers. We can talk about it <laughs> whenever you want. Awesome. Awesome. And yeah, we'll, we'll make sure we don't talk about it in front of Karen so we don't spoil it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thanks. Tim, were you going to say something? Yeah, no spoilers. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no spoilers. No spoilers. So um, yeah, everyone, thank you. This was, this was, I like how Tim said at the end, we kind of cracked the nut in the last 15, 20 minutes and how it felt like there was some underlying divergence brewing under the surface, but it wasn't explicitly surfaced until about 10 minutes ago with, with, uh, is this maybe for the next conversation, we should, we could frame it as, is this integral 2.0 or just more green? And maybe we can have like a Charles and Paul versus whoever's on the other side of this. I, I don't know if I'm qualified to facilitate that debate. Um, but I think that'd be really fun to explore that. And, and Tim and, and Heidi had, or, and, uh, had mentioned some ideas about, at the end posting and, and continuing the conversation. I didn't, I didn't hear all that, Tim, but um, if we, so did you want to, can you repeat that one more time? Like what, what to do next so that we can have a smooth transition into next week? Very briefly, Heidi recommended while we were on here to make the little notes, um, what Jeremy said in his last thing, he also had written a few minutes earlier, spatial thinking, semicolon, temporics and process thinking, semicolon imminence in the chats. If you put the things that you notice in the chats and what you just said is one that I realized I hadn't put yet, but like, is this green? Is this disowning something else? Uh, is it too much green? Like that would be another one. But if we have a whole bunch of these little bullet points, it'll remind us sort of what was open, what we left open at the end. And the other thing is if you don't do it here, because this is going to go away when we close the meeting, do add it to the meeting posting on, uh, Integral online? Is that what it is? Integral online. Uh, or whatever the yeah, website yeah, yeah. is. Was that clear? Yeah, yeah. Um and and I think it would be it would be fun. We'll discuss it more, but maybe it'd be fun to uh, yeah, make that a, an official official debate. And we're we're ending with some some convergence, I mean uh, divergence here at the end, which uh, I'm excited for because that makes me feel really excited about next week's uh because we, we know what we're going to be uh, hashing out explicitly and very clearly. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. <clears throat>
Thank you, Ryan. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.